Hey everybody, it's Ken. So I get lots of great questions and one of them came in this week about, you know, when we pay our investors back, are they still in the deal? And that's a legitimate question. I actually get this question a lot. And the answer is yes, but let me walk you through how we do that because I think that's the most important thing and the reason why all the investors continue to reinvest with us deal over deal over deal. So the very basics, as you guys know, when we buy something, these are the components of every single deal. So the income represents rents or other income and the things that manipulate that could be vacancy and delinquency and all those kinds of things. Uh, the next one are the expenses and the expenses are, you know, repairs and maintenance, marketing, taxes, insurance, payroll, all of those things. But ultimately what we're trying to solve to is the net operating income or the NOI that you guys hear a lot about, the NOI. So that's an NOI, net operating income. And that's what the bank looks at. And that's what you should be looking at. You should be looking at the NOI of the project because the bank then puts debt on that property and then hopefully you've got some cash flow afterwards. And I can assure you, if you bring this part into the bank, they're going to look at this and they're only going to give you enough money so that you have plenty of cash flow because what they're looking at is the property and how much they can lend on it. And so we don't have time for this video to get into how you do that and how you negotiate with the bank. But what you're trying to do here and hopefully what you've done as you've raised the money from your investors is you're trying to educate them on how you're growing, going to grow the net operating income. That's the entire game here. So we've bought properties that have been 50% vacant. We've bought properties that have been 100% occupied. And they all have a different recipe on how you grow the net operating income. So you can grow it by growing the income and you can grow it by reducing the expenses to the extent that you can. And that's how you do that. And that is how the business plan is put together. And that's how you raise capital, both in the form of debt and equity. So as you're always trying to solve the cash flow, which of course is the most important thing and what we're all trying to do. But let me walk you through kind of a real deal and how I look at it so I can show you how it works and how we exit from the property, how we get all our money back tax free and how the investors stay in the deal, which is the point of the question that we started with. So the one thing that I love is when you're looking at the NOI, which I just explained from the first sheet, was your net operating income. So we might buy a property uh, in the beginning with a $700,000 net operating income, okay? And at a 6% capitalization rate, if you don't know what a capitalization rate is, uh, we have it all over the website, inside the premium, outside the premium, behind the wall, in front of the wall. The capitalization rate is kind of the going rate of what's happening in the market at the time. But I used a 6% for you. Uh, so a 6% capitalization rate on a $700,000 NOI. So keep in mind, this is income minus expenses is about a $12 million purchase, okay? So that's all you need to know at this point. So with that, we're gonna get about $4 million in equity. So I'm gonna go out and get about $4 million from my investors to buy a $12 million property and I'm gonna match it up with hopefully around $8 million of debt. And we, we're not gonna go into the details of that now because we're just solving to do the investor stay in or not, okay? Now, here's the magic sauce. I'm not gonna buy this property unless I can grow the NOI to $1 million. And if you guys haven't looked at any of the videos on how to do that, you need to do that because this is called forced equity. This is called value add. This is how you make money in real estate, not buying something and hoping that it goes up. So, so we have an entire plan on growing the net, net operating income or the NOI to $1 million. And we'll go into more detail on that later. So it takes about, let's say three years to do that. So you buy it in year one, takes a couple more years to fix it and grow it and grow the NOI. It doesn't happen overnight, but you gotta have a plan. And by, the, by year four, we're going back to the bank with 
the net operating income $300,000 higher than what we started with and that we've created massive value for our investors. So using the exact same cap rate of 6% on $1 million, we've now grown the value of the property from 12 million to 17 million. So we've increased the value about $5 million. So we've literally forced equity in that property of about $5 million. And so at this point, the investors are very happy, but they don't have their money back yet. So then we take this 1 million, as I said earlier, the banker's now looking at this as what's the new value and how much can I lend on that? So then they, if we, they take a 75% loan to value on the $1 million, that equates to about $12 million in debt. So now I have $5 million of equity, $12 million in debt that they're going to give me. Now, what, what do I, what's the first thing I have to do? I have to pay off this. I have to pay the first one off, and now this is my new one, okay? What I've done here, though, guys, is I've also paid off the $4 million in equity. So I paid off the $4 million in equity plus the $8 million in debt. I've covered the entire purchase price of the property when I bought it in year one. And I've done it through a value add process here by using debt. Now here's the best part. This is all tax free because this is debt. It's not income. So in other words, I have to pay this back. You don't pay tax on debt. So this is the equivalent of a cash out refinance. And so what I've done is I've gotten there through effective property management and effective financial management and effective asset management of the property itself. And I've used bank debt when I bought it. I got 8 million and now I've got 12. And so now I have to service this debt. I have a new mortgage payment. Usually, obviously the mortgage payment's gonna be a little higher, but my NOI is higher to cover my mortgage payment. But the best part is, is these people now are literally infinite. They have an infinite return because they gave me four million, I gave it back to them four years later. They're still in the deal for the exact percentage that they came in on. So let's say we had four people in it a million dollars each. Their ownership percentages are the exact same. The difference is they each, all four got their $1 million back. They're into the deal for zero. Their return is infinite. And now this property is kicking off probably several hundred thousand dollars of cash flow every year and they have their money back. And so what they do here is they give us this 4 million again to go invest in another deal. So that's how it works. These people are obviously very happy. Four years later, they literally are in this deal for no money at this point. And now there's a massive disincentive for them to sell the project. So keep the questions coming. Great question. And we'll talk to you soon.